And however many you've done, that's we divide up 40% into that. So if there are 10 of them, guess what? Each one's worth four. And if you've done eight of them, you get 32. And you've lost eight points, eight pack points, if that makes sense. Then you got a final exam. That's worth 40%. That's 80%. We give this thing called pacing points for 20%. So just doing things that if you put enough effort in, you should be able to ace those 40 points of the pack. You should be able to finish all your assignments, program assignments, and quizzes and put enough time into this course. This course has never been failed by students who don't put the effort in. It's always been failed by students who don't have enough time and don't finish things. Right? If you, if you, if you learn slower than others, that's totally cool. Just put more time in and you'll eventually get past the finish line. We want to help you. We don't want to fail anybody. In fact, the failure is automatic, meaning the pass-fail line is a computer program that says how they do. We have, we have no kind of human aspect except we go right on the edge of the lines. But aside, otherwise, you're being graded as every other student for 32 years has been graded. If it's above this line, it's a pass. If it's below this line, it's a fail. Or if it's graded, it's wherever you are in that range. Pacing points, let's talk about that. So anyway, when it's all done, it gets a number from 0 to 100, and 90 to 100 is an A, you know, like high school. 80 to 90 is, is a B, all that stuff. This is brand new and very important to understand. And here is the new pacing point formula, redesigned with the explicit purpose, design criteria number one is simplicity. Here's how it works. You are going to be finishing these pack in a nice little pace, right? Finishing, finishing, finishing. I, I never saw that logo. The logo is tortoise and hare. <laughs> how many of you know the tortoise and the hare story? Those of you who don't, here's how it works. Very simple. There's a race between a tortoise, a turtle, and a hare, a rabbit. And we say, go. And the hare, the hare says, I'm so fast, you'll never catch me. He goes, phew, and walks like a foot before the finish line. He says, ah, I'm just tired. He sleeps under a tree. And the tortoise goes, ding, 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 and passes the hare, and the tortoise actually wins the race. Moral is, don't you know, take it for granted that you can beat the tortoise because a slow and steady person will eventually beat you all that stuff. So here's how this works. We're going to set a tortoise loose on the third week. And that tortoise is going to be completing pack at a very even pace if there are for exactly 10 weeks. So we wait three weeks to week three. And then you're going to work for exactly 10 weeks. So between week three and week 12, which is 10 total weeks in there, that tortoise is going to be competing the pack at a regular pace. If there are 10 things, it's one per week. If there are 20 things, two per week. If it's 11, you can imagine how we distribute them around, okay? 15, it's you know, one or two per every week, okay? Evenly distributed, like butter on an English muffin. Then, every single week, starting week three, ending week 12, we look at you, we look at the tortoise. If the tortoise is beating you by more than two, which is bad, two or more, you get zero points. You get out of 20, right? You have 20 points to get every week for 10 weeks, weeks three through weeks 12, you get zero, one, or two points. All that works up to eventually at the end of the semester, you're getting either zero through 20 points. Right? Max is two times 10, weeks is 21. So, turtles is, turtle, tur tortoise is beating you by more than two or equal to two, zero points. Tur tortoise is beating you just by a little bit, that's called the danger zone, that's only one point. If you are equal to the tortoise or ahead of it, like the hare was for most of the race, full two points. How about that? That's the whole, that's the whole pacing points. So I drew this picture in hopes of explaining how this works. So here's my pacing point example. Let's take a look at it and see if this makes sense. Here we go. The green zone, so the tortoise is this gray guy, this gray straight line. Okay? Everybody above that is the green zone, the two-point zone, right? Everything one below that is the yellow or the danger zone of only one pacing point per week zone. Anything below that is zero pacing points per week. So here's Anna. What Anna does is Anna starts off fast. At week one, she's already finished one assignment. The turtle doesn't start till week three. So Anna starts and is finished by the end of week one, which ended already, we're now in week two. By the end of week one, Anna's finished one assignment. Anna keeps working, but, and she's one ahead. By the end of week two, she's finished another assignment. So that's now two ahead of the tortoise. Tortoise is zero. Tortoise hasn't started yet. So Anna's doing great. Anna's giving herself a buffer. She's the hare in this example. So now, then she rests for two weeks. So weeks three and four, let me make sure I get this right. So it doesn't do anything between week two and three. It does not do anything between weeks three and four. And guess what happens? The tortoise catches up. But no harm to Anna, she already had this big lead, and she gets how many points so far? On week three, two points, right? She's ahead of the tortoise. Week four, two points, equal to her ahead of the tortoise. Then she says, oh my gosh, tortoise is right here. I better hurry up. 
Tortoise walks a step, she walks a step. Again, equal to her head of the tortoise, another two points. She's just putting points in the bank, folks. This is 20 points you should all have in the bank. Come final exam time, you've got 20 points in your pocket. You should have another 40, 20 points in this pocket for pacing, 40 in this pocket for the pack. You put enough time in, you get 60 points in your pocket. You need a 10 points, 11 points on the final out of a 40 to pass? Come on. No one's ever failed who had, because by the way, to get all points on the pack for your quizzes, it means that you have passed 100% all the quizzes. Not just, well, I got a 30 on that quiz and a 27. No, you got 100% on all the quizzes to walk in with all full pack, right, on the quizzes. And program assignments, too. You know how the final exam works? Like, does it blend? Which is like you take a golf club or a cell phone, you put it in a big blender, an industrial blender, and it goes and you get like iPhone juice, right? <laughs> what do we do? We take all our quizzes. We put them all in a big does it blend blender, we go out comes an exam. There was not, never a question on a final that was, never, that was not on a quiz before. Does that make sense? There's nothing between the last quiz and the final. There's no missing information there. If you passed all the quizzes, you should ace the final exam. Because it's not any harder. Same difficulty, just different numbers, obviously. Different kind of problems, but same basic idea. So anyway, point is, Anna's doing great. And for weeks, you know, five, she stays ahead. And week six, she does two assignments. So it's a little slow, but she's up there. She's still in the green zone. She's doing great until week seven. She goes on a trip and she gave herself a little bit of a lead, so she's okay. But the problem is the tortoise keeps on going, like the hare. It's like she's asleep and the tortoise keeps passing her. So week seven, she's okay, so she gets her two points. Week eight, right on the line, still full two points. Week nine, she's still away. She's now in the danger zone. She only gets one point week nine, right? Week 10, she's now two behind the tortoise. And she's gotten zero points. She has started to lose points on her final exam. I mean, on her final 100 points, right? And she keeps working. Now she's, oh my gosh, I'm behind. She gets the gear on. She puts her work on. She puts her nose to the grindstone, foot to the floor. She keeps working. She does an assignment every time. But because she's still behind the tortoise, she gets no points for being in that red zone. So even though she's working hard and coming to self based center regularly, in our new simple, simple formula, no points. Lesson for this, big lesson. Get ahead of the tortoise and stay there. Stay ahead. If you have any trip or sickness or whatever you need to go to, you give yourself that buffer as she did in the early point and in the middle point. But you can't let it get past you. And that tortoise is just a regular tortoise, very slowly working its way through. It's supposed to finish by the 12th week, which gives us that new window of all the students who kind of can't do the tortoise thing and have to have work done. They can do the work, they get the pack points, but they don't get any pacing points because they would have lost them already. Make sense? As Anna does. She keeps working past then, but gets no points for the work she does in, in terms of pacing week 13 because she's already behind the torch. First, it's finished already, so she lost it. All right. So, there's a new policy also. We actually examined all the students in the past and said <coughs> what works for students and what doesn't. It turns out that any student that waits to the fifth week and doesn't, fifth week, by the way, is drop deadline, and does not even start anything does not finish, by the way, there is an orientation assignment you have. That doesn't count towards the pack. That's just kind of making sure you understand this policy. <coughs> they have not passed a programmer quiz, and again, orientation does not count for this. By the fifth week, Carol's going to look you up and say, hey, guys, it's the fifth week. You've already been losing pacing points for the last couple of weeks. She will send a mail to all of you saying, guys, if you are in that category, you need to drop now. She'll send the mail on Thursday, giving you the Friday to go to Sproul and drop the class. Because we don't want you to fail. If you don't drop the class, the system goes, kicks in, goes, chung, 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 and anybody who's in that category and has not dropped gets an F automatically. We, we, we erase them from our list. F goes in the books, and we move on. So don't do that. We just try to encourage you to at least get started. That's kind of like, that's kind of a motivational factor. But hopefully the pacing points is this tortoise that starts working in week three, hopefully that's another motivational factor for you as well. I said, let me compare and contrast CS3S to CS3L to see what the, what the pass rate is, to see how they're doing. They're about the same, or they fail, you know. Because I said, well, it looks like the, the CS3S, the self-paced version, actually has higher failure rates, even though they can take it half speed than L. You think, well, L has to have higher failure rates because they have to take it all four units in one semester. Our kids can take it half speed. They certainly have a higher pass rate, right? This is a year ago, 2008 fall. People exactly in this chair one year ago today, that was their pass rate. By the way, pass means A through C minus. Even though technically a D is a pass, if you consider pass fail, but if, it's a, if they take this course pass not pass, a D is actually a fail. 
Fez it out for this for this data, I will consider a D a fail, even though on your GPA, a D is a, not a zero, a D is a 1.0. Um, 